We are now going to the start. We are talking about an accelerator, which is actually launched by a telephone company, telecom company called Telefonica, which is a global business. And we have yeah, the UK head of Vera, Simon, who can introduce himself. We start with the small introductions, then we have prepared a few questions. And we would start to say, Simon Gonzalo, thank you very much for making NOAA for you a location where you exhibit your businesses. We are very, very thankful to your support. And we are very excited to hear the Weira story and some of your successful companies. So, Simon, if, if you shortly introduce yourself, we're going to talk about Weira a lot in a second. That's the whole purpose of the panel. But we also like to know a little bit about you. Okay, so um, thank you very much for the warm introduction. It's uh, fantastic to be here. Uh, I'm Simon Devonshire. I'm the director for Weira across Europe. Um, so I report into Gonzalo, uh, who is the global CEO. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Gonzalo Martin Villa, and I'm the lucky one who gets to run this uh, globally. And thank you very much for the opportunity um, to talk about Wira and share our story. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. So let, let's start with a very basic question, and maybe Gonzalo, that's for you. What is Wira? Well, Waira is um, start. Uh, Waira, by the way, means uh, wind in Quechua language. The so can you repeat Quech that? Quechua language is the ancient uh, language for the Peruvians. Uh, so it's wind in Quechua language. Okay? Wind, as in wind, wind. change. Okay. And it's good, as we know, from airplanes to have back wind rather than uh, okay. front wind, okay. tail wind, this right? Is, and this is the wind that um, gives help to the startups. But. Uh, uh, the name has to do because uh, we started in Latin America, or Waira, as you mentioned, is part of, um, of, uh, of Telefonica, uh, the Spanish but now global telephone company. And, um, and we started in Latin America only two years ago. Okay? It's a startup accelerator. Um, we have done things very, very fast. As of today, we have a presence in 12 countries. 14 academies, as we call the physical spaces, where we... And somebody told me you are the largest internet accelerator program of the world. Is, is that right? Probably right. Uh, probably right, because we... Well, this in the past two years, we have received more than 23,000 projects to accelerate, and we have invested in more than 300. So it's probably true. And in terms of locations and our global footprint, it's probably true, because we're presenting... 12 countries in Latin America and in Europe. So, so how many people at Telefonica or the Telefonica payroll are working for Weira? Oh, it's very thin. Very we, we, we absolutely operate uh, the lean and agile model. So Weira Europe um, is literally only four people. In each academy, we tend to run each academy with only uh, three people. So in a nutshell, it's a very simple concept. We build a physical space, we run a competition, we try and find the best digital startups, and then we invest in them and accelerate them. So it's, it's a very simple model, um, but we do it on a super so thin basis. Overall, it's like not more than 50 people around yeah. the world. Okay. okay, so since telecom companies do not have, as far as I know, the best track record growing with the digital world, I think we had Martin Endele from Scrow24 earlier here, where Deutsche Telekom invested into that classified and made that a multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. Why is Telefonica suddenly, or two years ago, started with the objective to do Vera? What is the thinking? Is it to cultivate entrepreneurial digital spirit within Telefonica, or is it just making money? Well, it's, it's uh, not really one reason. It's probably all those reasons that you have mentioned. First of all, it's a matter of giving opportunities to people that were developing startups in Latin America and in Europe. So it's helping young people and young startups. It's also a matter of business. Uh, the digital world is a huge opportunity for telcos, and we, we need it to be in this world. So, so it's a matter of, of, of doing business and getting money back, of course. And, and actually, when people ask us uh, what is the success of Waira, probably uh, as of today, and more success stories will come, but as of today, it's probably internal transformation in Telefonica. People uh, were very lucky because people in Telefonica like, love Waira, uh, and we feel that we're getting that entrepreneurial spirit within the company, so that's great. 
but it's it's very important though. I think I think wire is important. I want to see more uh, corporates do what uh, Telefonica is doing. I think that what Telefonica is doing is unfortunately very rare. I don't see many other organisations tangibly investing in startups, startup in infrastructure, ecosystem development in the way that we are. And I think it's important because we're seeing the birth of the digital economy. Um, the opportunity is exponential growth. What we bring to it. Wire's biggest asset is, is Telefonica. So what we bring to this space is the potential fast track to market. So you know, if you're an investor and you're thinking about backing a startup, surely a startup that has all the resources of Telefonica behind it must be a more compelling proposition than, than a startup that doesn't have that. Okay, we will come to that and obviously at some stage maybe Vaira could be also the most uh, important thing to Telefonica. I remember in the old days, Terra Networks and Lycos, I was a banker at Lehman Brothers, which seems to be a dinosaur from the past, but I was working on the Terra Lycos uh, merger back then, and I remember Terra Networks at some stage had a quite big market cap. So, talking about an accelerator program, when I'm an entrepreneur, and let's assume I'm not a serial entrepreneur, I have several choices of raising money. I can go to a venture capitalist, to an angel investor. I can try to make it myself, which is hard. Yeah. What does Telefonica, Vera, offer entrepreneurs? Why should I come to you? What is really the stuff you do? You said you offer real estate. Um, what other functions, what other burdens you take off the entrepreneur in the early days? We, we, we. This is what uh, Simon was playing. We give them, uh, we, we give them a physical space to work in. We finance them, we invest in all of them. We have invested in all those 300 companies. Uh, we give them acceleration services, everything that is needed for a period of eight months. Uh, basically help with capital letters, everything they need. If you need uh, somebody to explain to you how to be better in user experience, we bring someone from Telefonica. We, if we don't find in Telefonica, we'll go outside and bring somebody to help you out. By the end of, the, of, the, of that period, of those eight months, we organize a demo day. Actually, we, we organize our first This global. demo day happened, I think, yesterday, yes. right? Yeah. Okay, we come to that in a sec. So you're, you're giving money, but you are the board which normally an entrepreneur couldn't afford to have. So you're providing all the important answers to questions in the early days. Yeah. That's correct. How much money you invest and how you structure the investment as an entrepreneur. If I go to Vera, yeah. you get a few hundred thousand dollars. No, or how shall we think about it? 40,000 euros, okay? And specifically, we've arrived at that amount of money. Um, uh, from my point of view, you know, we know that it's not enough for the amount of time that they're with us. They're with us a long time. So accelerators vary from like three weeks to like three months. With us, they are with us from maybe six or nine months. So the 40,000 euros uh, is enough to remove the obstacles to prevent them from uh, embarking on their journey. But they must come either knowing that they're compromising their lifestyle or they have savings or they have investment from friends and family or they have another investor or they have revenue. If they don't come preconditioned to how they're going to solve that problem, then it's not going to work. So we but don't bankroll them forever. You need a business plan to come. You send in the business plan yeah. Yeah. through the website yeah. or I would yeah. say your events. Yeah. Once you are part of the program, you're accompanying the firm for, you said, up to nine months. Yeah. And then is it my right impression that with a demo day, you're basically taking what started as an embryo to like a toddler, present him and yes. find adoptive parents or adopting parents. Exactly. Is that what you're That's doing? Correct. That's, That's how correct. we think of it, yeah. Okay, so what, what, what are you looking for in the people you back? Talent. <laughs> how, how do you measure talent? So, University degree? Well, Gondola has a brilliant uh, expression about this, that what we're looking for is uh, good people because you can help people, uh, you can't really help an idea. You know, so one of the things we're looking for is uh, demonstrable talent. The people that tend to do well are, uh, you mentioned serial entrepreneurs. You know, that's for me is quite important. Some of our best startups are uh, led by people who are former founders, possibly with, with two or three exits previously. That's not true of all of them, but they're certainly the ones that really stand out to me. But the real star performers have a constant track record of achievement. It's just something that they, is in their DNA. So, so let's talk about numbers. 
How many? You said you get 28,000 applications a year. 23,000 in these two years. In, that in we two, two years. years. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the first year was less than the second year. Well, actually, uh, maybe not. No, yeah, no, we're getting no. less now. Actually, when we, we, launched, uh, we launched it and we started in Latin America, and probably Guaira was uh, the only accelerator there So, uh, in many of the countries where we launched. So, we got a lot of projects at the beginning, and now we still get a lot of them. But uh, the numbers are not important in terms of how many we got. The important numbers are how good they are. The quality. Okay. quality. Yeah, the quality. Okay. That's like NOAA conference. Yeah. That's we totally increase right. quantity and quality of the audience. That's totally good. right. So, you got 23,000 applications. They stay nine months with you. What is the success rate? How many get through the demo day? And I guess you have first-hand feedback from yesterday. Can you share with us some early success stories? We have several. I mean, uh, well, we, we have had, uh, remember that these are companies that uh, many of them didn't, didn't even exist when, uh, when they started with Enwaira. We have several good uh, investment stories right now. Um, uh, money coming to the startups has been doubled our investment from outside investors. So, so that is good news. Uh, and you don't invest after these nine months? Some, in some cases or we do. Cases. Also, in some cases we do. Is it like a certain allocation at Telefonica on the balance sheet or is it a we play judge, by year? We, oh, that's the next body fund. Let's put the We judge each one on its merits. But, you know, if I were to set an expectation, the truth is it's unlikely that we're going to follow one fund. You know, in many ways, as an accelerator, it's, we get a better return by spending those euros on more startups than putting a little bit more into the ones that we've already committed to. So, you know, it, it's better for our portfolio to, to yeah, continue what, to diversify. What we, what we foster is visibility for the startups as we did yesterday, as we're doing here today, because yeah. our startups are, so please feel free to talk to them and yeah. um, write your checks. So, um, they're around here. So, so, so Gonzalo, what is the one or two or three startups the NOAA attendees should watch out for? Well, we have uh, some good stories like, I don't know, uh, Trustif. Trustif. Yeah. Trustif. Uh, is yeah. that, where is that business located? In Ireland, in Dublin. It's an Irish business. It's Irish fantastic. business. Fantastic. Good business. We have Insignia. But what, uh, what is Trustif doing? So Pat is here. Uh, I would definitely recommend that you try and uh, connect with him. Uh, basically, they're transforming e-commerce and eliminating fraud within that. But it, they've developed a unique technology to do that that leverages um, social networks, frankly, and it's a very, very clever uh, technique. And what they're... It's like an uh, identity check through social networks? Exactly that, yeah. exactly that. And it's uh, helping to eliminate abandoned baskets, which is a, obviously a massive problem it in the whole... It sounds very exciting. It's a big, yeah. big well, theme. It's, big it's theme. not just exciting to us. It's clearly exciting to the investor community because they've just closed the seed round at $3 million, which That's is... a big seed round. Well, and it's who, the biggest. Can you say who invested? Uh, so... Um, Yes, uh, 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 prestige investors. I, um, so we have uh, Greystock, uh, I think. Um, Mangrove. Uh, Mangrove. Mangrove yeah. is obviously the backer from Skype. They know yeah. where to put the money. Exactly. So that's a great, great already success story. Yeah, just, to, just to let you know the wide range of startups that we have, and I believe there's, there's many people from Germany here that uh, I've been talking to. We have um, here a company that uh, presented, that did a pitch yesterday from Germany. That what they do is they're developing. What's their name? Uh, LearnShift. Yeah. And what they do is they're developing a pen that vibrates when you commit a mistake. Oh my God. God. It's and it's one. not just a, a clever hardware play, it's actually a platform. So you're using your iPad right now. You know, one of the major successes of that technology is the fact that they created an entire ecosystem around it. LearnShift are doing the same with the pen. And again, they're attracting prestige investors. I, I'm a bit nervous of mentioning names because uh, <laughs> obviously a lot of these conversations are very confidential. But they'll be alone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Just exactly. us. No, Sorry. No, no, no. Just yeah. us. So when you look at the whole accelerator market, there, there was a very nice blog my friend Lars Hinrichs from Hack Forward wrote. I actually took Xing public while I was at Lehman Brothers. And Lars became a good friend over the years. Actually, the first year he's not here. Um, so he wrote this big blog and saying the sole accelerator incubation market is just becoming a bit too competitive and the businesses he sees are sometimes too much focused on niches. And I was a speaker in his Berlin event and I can confirm. How do you see the accelerator market? Who are your competitors? Are you competing with angel investors, VCs 
or other other accelerator pros. What are your when you speak to entrepreneurs, your kind of top competitive solutions <clears throat> for the entrepreneur? Well, we, we want to see this not as having competitors. This is about creating the correct and growing the ecosystem. The other day in Madrid, we were um, speaking a panel like this, and somebody said, are there too many accelerators worldwide? Yes. And there was a guy from Mexico, the guy that manages 500 startups there, and he, his answer was good. He said, uh, are, there many, are there too many doctors in the world? Are there too many uh, hospitals? Uh, so we believe this is good, that this creates a whole ecosystem for startups and they, what they have, they're going to have to do is they're going to have to choose uh, whoever has uh, the best offer for them and, and for us this is, I mean, what is differential about Wire is that we have Telefonica, which is an incredible opportunity for them and uh, taking into account th more than 300 million clients that if you have a good product you can deliver it to them and also our global footprint and probably that is unique uh, within the accelerators. How do you cut through the red tape though? I mean, you promised to deliver Telefonica and its clients realistically when you invest in, you ha said 300 uh, entrepreneurs you backed. Who is making sure that you can actually deliver the synergies? Is that we something do. which works? We do, and uh, in our alumni, 50% of all the teams that exit Wire are in some form of active trial with Telefonica. It might be uh, a relatively small scale trial, it might be with staff or whatever, but there are active conversations going on with many so of us. So Wire is integrated in the whole Telefonica Absolutely. organization. And, and to be honest, at the beginning, we knew that was one of our greatest challenges, okay? It's, uh, uh, understanding how to work, just how the startups must work with Telefonica, but the good news is that uh, we're, done, we're doing it, and uh, yeah. we're seeing very good stories for Telefonica and for the startups. And I don't think we cracked it yet. You know, it's not no. an easy thing. We've got a lot more work to do on it, but we're really focused on it. And you know, with, with regards to your question about, you know, are there too many accelerators? I think there's space for more uh, accelerators that have that potential of accessing corporate uh, customer bases. I think Google is also demonstrating with Google Ventures, the investment yeah. in Uber, for example, how they can work the organization, integrate them in the map. Yeah. This morning we were talking with Klaus Hommels and Philip Freise about how big internet can get. And we were talking about how they find the right things to invest in. And they said it has to be a big market and they have to make sure they're kind of swimming with the ecosystems of Google and Apple. How, how do you evaluate your investment opportunities? How do you really look at the opportunity? You said people matter the most, which is the same what we heard consistently throughout the day. But do you evaluate uh, investment opportunity by also how big the market opportunity is? Yeah, yeah you must take into account that our, we have a huge platform for the startup, so it has no sense, for example, uh, accelerating a company in Ireland that uh, is not willing to go global. And uh, first of all, because uh, it's global and, 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 and we have the power to scale, to make those companies scale very easily. We always say that for us, uh, taking a company from Sao Paulo that wants to, to launch in its product in the UK is very easy. It takes the time of the flight for us because we have a place in Sao Paulo, we get the, the guys, we put them in a, in a place that is not only similar, it's the same, has the same look and feel, all the academies have the same look and feel, so it's easy for us to move them around and to scale those projects very easily, so they need to be global. And the thing that global unites opportunities them, you're looking for. Yeah, so the thing that unites them is they're all digital. So they've all got the opportunity for exponential growth. But they're not uh, necessarily telco, they're not necessarily mobile, they're not necessarily apps, but they're all digital in their DNA. Very exciting. Let's ask about a few uh, technical, practical questions. So Weira.com, I can log on. Dot org. Dot org and submit the business plan. Yep. yep. Do you allow your companies you invested in to raise money in parallel or you want to be yeah. first the way around. Yeah, no, no, no. So you, you give the entrepreneur still the flexibility to raise money outside from you, which you probably welcome because more, more cooks yeah. in the kitchen sometimes yeah. actually sometimes. make a better meal. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And there are, well, first of all, we, um, the, um, the call for projects is not open all the time. We do three call for global call for projects during the year. And, and many things have changed since the beginning because we have learned a lot and we have been changing things. But there are two things that, we, that are basic and uh, part of our structure. First of all, we don't ask for control yeah. of the companies. 
and second, we don't ask for any exclusivity rights whatsoever in the products and services that they deliver. And that is something that we're not going to change. Everything else is it's, um, it's something that will probably change. So one last question. Yesterday you showcased your success stories. How many companies have you shown yesterday? 16. 16. Six zero. No, 16. No, one, one, six. Six. one six. One six. One six. We're 10 here in the UK. Uh, well, we did the, the demo day in two places at the same time, interconnected, Sao Paulo and London. Okay, and there were uh, six companies in Sao Paulo and 10 companies here in the UK, coming from all over the world, but uh, in those two locations. Well, that's fantastic news. Again, we are very thankful you are here and your Thank companies. You. And I, I hope that your companies find a lot of adopting parents. And um, Absolutely. Please know there's a Vera lounge up here. Yeah, upstairs. Come upstairs. to see Gonzalo and Steve and talk about the future of Vera. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you.